Now I would like to introduce two of my three moderators. This is Don D'Amico, you all, uh, all of you know him. David Steele, now Don, it's up to you. Well, thank you, Klaus. Again, we want to welcome you to the 2023 edition of Frankfurt Retina, and we're delighted to begin with a very innovative and exciting group of live surgery in Turkey. Dr. Avci, we're with you. Uh, so show us, we saw a view of the macular hole uh, briefly. Uh, good morning again, dear colleague. Uh, I will operate a case with very large macular hole, and this is my regular setup for macular surgery. I use 27 gauge stroker, and chandelier is not uh, regularly because for this live surgery case, I prefer to add a chandelier light also to get better illumination. So um, I will uh, apply a temporal inverted flap technique for this case but there are some modification in my technique um, now we will first now we just start the surgery and we will first apply a vitrectomy and core vitrectomy and removal of the posterior highlight then uh, we continue the other uh, uh, steps And have you already detached the posterior hyaloid here? We, we did not see. Uh, not yet, uh, Don. Uh, I think it was a partial detachment that was on the OCT. Ramsey, which system are you using to do the surgery with? System is Dork Ewa Nexus, 27-gauge uh, Aveta Trocker. And the uh, microscope is Muller Wedel HR900 and IBOS system for uh, viewings, IBOS 2. Remzi, you're putting in some, if we could go to room three, uh, we see you're putting a PFO bubble on yeah. the uh, macula. Room three, please. Yes. So, uh, uh, as you uh, see, uh, we already removed the vitreous and separate the posterior highlight. And now uh, we inject a as uh, PFCA bubble. This is a different uh, staining technique that I call this uh, crescent shape staining technique to uh, prevent staining of the inner surface of ILM to be inverted. Okay, we will it. come. We will come right back. We have a critical moment in room one. So Stano, we're back with you. Uh, if you can, uh, we won't. Yes. And. Yeah. Yes, so I, I put the corneal layer on the retina, it remains adherent, you see? Yes. That, you see how, how it's large, you know, that this, because it ap it appears very small under the microscope, on the optic nerve, it's larger than optic nerve. So Let's go to room one. Uh, Remzi, we see now you have, uh, you have put uh, blue staining, and it's, of course, excluded by the perfluoron. If we could have room one. Uh, uh, yeah, Don, uh, I put a room, large bubble of PFO. Sorry, I'm sorry, room three. I'm sorry, excuse room me, three. room three. Remzi, if we could have you yeah. uh, in Turkey. Thank you. We see the uh, blue staining is being excluded by the PFCL. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, we use this one to not stain the inner surface of ILM to be inverted and only uh, plan to stain the around uh, like a temporal crescent part. Usually I wait like 30 seconds for dye, but I, I wait a little bit longer for this patient to show you also because you were busy in that other room. So then uh, I removed the dye and during this all man, um, uh, procedure, uh, infusion is open and I keep open infusion. And then uh, as you see, uh, there's no uh, big turbulence uh, uh, and the dye is not spread away uh, all the vitreous cavity now. I removed the uh, PFO completely because you should pay attention to remove all PFO to not st uh, leave any part of uh, PFO in the uh, on the macular area. Now, as you see, uh, the temporal part is perfectly stained, and and the other part is not. Why we do this? Because we observe toxicity finding in patient uh, with. Uh, temporal inverted lab technique 
Can we switch to ninth diopter uh, uh, şeye değişebilir miyiz? Uh, we will we'll change now I, uh, lens and for, to the ninth diopter lens from uh, IBOS. And because we observe toxicity findings uh, in inverted flap technique on long term follow up period, because when we stain the inner surface ILM to be invert and the dye may stain uh, into the eye uh, and it trapped uh, under the ILM and contact with uh, RP and the macular area. And therefore, we assume that this may cause because of toxicity, because it stayed there for a long time, because in standard technique, when we stay in uh, ILM and we remove ILM uh, completely, but in temporal invert, we invert and we stay there. And therefore, we stay only this area. Now I will create a crescent shape uh, ILM peeling in this part, then invert ILM from temporal to the nasal uh, over the macular hole area. So if we understand you correctly, this exclusion is done to prevent uh, a toxicity, a toxic yeah. contact of the of the stain with the RP in the macular hole. Exactly. So comments, uh, grazie. No, I, it is interesting to uh, take care of the toxicity. Of course, although I'm not sure it is so relevant if it do respect with correct timing of opposition of a dye, contact of a dye with a, with a retina. What do you think? It was maybe true with ICG, with the present yeah. eyes, uh, blue, blue and lutein blue. So, really, it's quite a safe dye, uh, uh, per, uh, Dr. Pertil, but Maybe this technique is much better for ICG users. And uh, we know this is really toxic. But even in the brilliant blue, there is some studies on the literature show that there is some toxicity uh, in long-term toxicity, like cystic change on the macular and long-term parallel period. And therefore, we uh, developed this modified technique just to uh, keep away dye from the uh, inverted in a surface of inverted yeah. item. So, da David, where do you come down on the toxicity of a, of a blue colorant, for example, in the macula, or or the whole a whole colorant toxicity issue? Yeah, I must say I haven't. Seen, I just use as as Remsi is using. I use a pure brilliant blue G um, rather than mixed with tripan blue, and I haven't seen any toxicity. But um, interesting, another effect of your technique, Remsi, is that your flap the bit of the flap that will be over the hole won't have blue in it either, will it? So you'll avoid any any contact of blue with the actual RPE. Yeah. So uh, we already finished the uh, crescent area. Now I will leave the ILM from the surface of the retina, but we need some more. Yeah. Uh, do so the, it's interesting how, how people create flaps like this. You're creating a large temporal opening to create yeah. to, to maximize the flap size. Um, the, the only get, I guess the disadvantage is that, you, that you're having to do a lot of pickups in the temporal area, um, which is where the ILM, where the um, nerve fiber layer is thinnest. Um, but, it, but it's certainly creating a very large um, hinged flap. One That's advantage of ICG is that it really stiffens the ILM. I mean, it really changes the characteristics of the ILM. And uh, I will confess publicly uh, that I still use ICG for uh, temporal flaps because I find it, so it, easy. It's, it's simple. You agree with that, Grazia? Yeah, yeah I, I don't use it, but it's uh, so, so easy because indeed uh, it changes the characteristic of a membrane. It lifts up uh, very easily and you don't have to pull we... and to push too much. You, you could send some of this ILM also to Dr. Rizzo. He can put it on top of the amnion and we have, you have so much ILM here. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as you know, we already peel temporal ILM and invert over the macular whole area and it's already surgery is finished. Now, now, Remzi, I, I recall you saying in a previous yeah, meeting yeah, that yeah. you like to use yes. perfluorochemical to push the ILM, uh, but no, you're not using it here, or yes, uh, I, I will I will use again, uh, Don, and uh, because, uh, uh, but first we I clean to 
cornea şey var. Uh, my uh, view scholastic from the cornea to get a better vision because there is some. Uh, we will come back. Let's look at uh, Stano in room one. Stano. How, how, when do you decide you have pushed it in enough and will stay uh, there? I don't, I don't think it's necessary to remove all the BSS in the ah. number or maybe under the retina because uh, the plugs. Uh, acts after a few minutes, of course. But I think it's not necessary to drain completely the right hand. The right hand is still detached. You see, the bubble is completely. No, no, but. Uh, uh, so I, I don't, I don't remove the, all the ESS in front of the optoner because sometimes I remove also the the amniotic, of course, because for uh, Dr. Avci, if you we can take a look at your flap technique, and now you have put perfluorochemical back in the eye. Is that correct? Yeah. So, uh, yes, I inject a PFO again to uh, stabilize the flap uh, as a single layer. So I yeah. like to uh, keep the flap as a single layer. So this is, the, I inject again PFO and uh, stay there for a few minutes during the checking the periphery for the uh, iatrogenic tear. And this uh, may create us, uh, uh, allowed us to um, attach a flap temporarily uh, on the macular area and then uh, we will do fluid air exchange and remove the PFO and uh, finish the surgery. So uh, I you use are, again uh, this. Uh, uh, wait one moment. You are saying that this time, these minutes under the perfluorochemical increases the adhesion of the flap? Yes. You find, how long do you need to wait uh, to just, get Just three to four increase? minutes maybe, uh, Don. Just three, three to four, four minutes. minutes. Not, not, not so long. And even we remove the PFO before uh, fluid during air exchange, the flap is not uh, reinverted again. It stay in place and stay attached. Because uh, the inner surface ILM has some chemicals that uh, helps us to uh, attach on the retina with the maybe pressure, with the gravity pressure of the um, uh, PFO. And uh, a few minutes uh, can be enough to keep it as a single layer. As you see, now all the uh, flap is uh, laying down as a single layer inversions. And so is this important? Um, I'm not sure, but we also we evaluate the uh, inverted flap with Amphase OCT after surgery. And we can see all foldings or uh, the other uh, uh, configuration. But uh, with this technique and most of the patient we provide a single layer uh, inverted flap because the uh, ILM is not inserted into the macular hole area. I think this is important to uh, get um, better uh, physiologic more, uh, recovery of the macular hole under the uh, ILM uh, during well, we have a, days after surgery. We, we have a beautiful view of your procedure. Uh, Stano, vorremmo fare un'intervista con te. So, uh, and uh, if you can be near the microphone, Stano, in uh, a moment. We, we first check with Marco Mura. Marco, uh, room two, please. We carry out many, many OCTs to see some passage between the Hey, Ramsey, we're back with you in room three. If we could return to room three. Okay, so we already start the air fluid exchange, and the more uh, more than half of the vitreous is removed the fluid, and but there's still half uh, the, there's fluid. But and you can see uh, the PFO bubble on the uh, posterior pole. Now, before first uh, complete the fluid air exchange, I remove the uh, PFO, and then I remove the rest of the fluid. As you see, we remove the PFO, but the flap is uh, in place. It's not uh, move. And now we remove the rest of the fluid. And in a few seconds, the fluid air exchange will, yes, it's complete now. So you see, uh, hmm. the flap is perfectly uh, uh, is in, in place. And we already finished all the fluid. But the cue point that we do not remove all the fluid first, then we start like half of the vitreous and remove the fluid. Then I remove the PFO to be sure that I remove all the PFO. Then the rest of the fluid uh, I continue to uh, remove. And finally, I finished uh, with this 
procedure. So, so I, I will repeat part. that. I will repeat that for the audience. He removes uh, a large part of the fluid, but not all. Then he removes the PFO completely, be, and he can do that because he has a little fluid left on the retina. And then at the end, he removes the remaining uh, fluid. Uh, it's also useful to note he does it so that he's on the uh, nasal side of the disc so that the fluid will travel across the flap and help keep it in uh, position. Uh, this is a textbook case. Anything you would do differently, uh, uh, Ramsey, for this? It looks perfect. Exa uh, exactly. You said that always uh, aspirate over the optic disc and during the aspiration also helps to keep the flap in place because the uh, the fluid accumulation come uh, uh, from this area to the optic disc and also helps us to keep the uh, flap in place so sophia now, we have we have sophia in the audience can you move to a microphone if you are uh, here uh, maybe we can invite uh, uh, navroka if you are in the audience uh, this morning if you can move to a microphone we we would love to get a comment uh, while we're talking here okay Ramsey, can so, I just have another thing people have described doing, which I do sometimes, is tilting the head. So moving the head to one side to, to enhance that, that flap um, displacement. Although you don't need it in this case because the flap's nicely in place. But do you, do you do that? Do you ever do you ever tilt the head or not? He's asking if you turn the head to make it uh, to help yeah. the brain. Uh, I will show you how they're now already finished the surgery, but I would like to show the uh, position of the head after surgery, maybe in a few seconds. Now okay. I'm going because the eye is dry now and uh, I'm uh, taking like this. And uh, keep the patient's position uh, to the, to the uh, nasal part is like oh, this yeah. to the nasal part uh, to down to opposite side to keep the flap area dry uh, for the rest of the accumulation of the fluid during the other manipulations. Yep, so you did that. So yeah, good. Nice. So we can see that now, nicely. Okay, we will see, finish and uh, remove the trocar. And, well, and uh, just, I will air, you're leaving give... just, just air, you put any other yeah. tamponade or yeah. just air? And normally I use air dome, but this is very large uh, uh, hole. And therefore in this kind of patient, I prefer 5% C3F8 for tamponade and face down position for at least three days, three to four days. Face down position three, four days and uh, C3F8 tamponade. So you're using um, dilute C3F8 rather than a short acting gas. Is that is that because yeah. of availability yeah, or other you reasons? You can use short acting gas also, but I uh, have only C3F8. I don't yeah. like to uh, use different kind of gas only to change the concentration uh, like five percent or the others and therefore uh, i do not use uh, the other short acting gas and of course c3f8 is the least um, greenhouse yeah. inducing gas of all the gases we've got yeah. other than air of course <laughs> okay but, uh, do you use in um, recurrent uh, macular holes, large recurrent macular holes, do you use uh, um, free flap technique? Can yes. Transplantation uh, of ILM. And in this case, is how do you maintain it in place during the exchange? Because uh, uh, Yes. Uh, if in the recurrent case, if there is no ILM, if there is ILM around the hole, it's uh, maybe sometimes we feel uh, ILM is not large area. I prefer to uh, apply pedicle flap. But if it's not possible, then I can use free ILM flap or in such patient, um, uh, sometimes I prefer uh, the other uh, filling materials such as uh, otolagretinal transplant. But free ILM uh, is not easy to keep it in place uh, during uh, surgery. And therefore, uh, actually, uh, sometimes I prefer um, autolog retinal uh, graft, or, uh, but not, I did not use uh, amnion uh, membrane anymore uh, until now. Very good. Uh, Remzi, so uh, we see that you've done your surgery perfectly. You used a C3F8 tamponade. Uh, and 
what is your, let's say that this operation does not work. Of course it will work. But if it does not work, would you try to reposition this flap? Would you do something else? What is your approach to a failed temporal ILM flap? So uh, the uh, inverted flap is the biggest advantage of inverted flap technique, Don, is that give, give a chance for patient on surgery to do the same procedure again if it is failed or the inverted flap is re-inverted and this uh, hole is not closed. We can go into the eye in 10 minutes and re-invert the flap again. And maybe in that time, uh, in recurrence, uh, if there is a recurrence or if there is a fail case, I prefer uh, like 8% CTRF8, keep face down position a little bit more. But uh, I apply this surgery more than three, uh, three, uh, almost 300 cases, and only there is two cases is failed. One was again life surgery case because the most important thing is that to keep the patient immediate face down or at least side position immediately after surgery to prevent uh, inversion of the flap during the fluid accumulation. And if we pay attention to this, and therefore usually I prefer local anesthesia, not general anesthesia, because in general anesthesia, it's really difficult to manage uh, early post period like this. In local anesthesia, and immediately after surgery, I turn the patient's face to the opposite side and remove the trucker and then face down position uh, and they stay in a face down position for three days. Yes, he can, can walk and she can uh, only uh, the forbidden, uh, the, uh, I can say that only you cannot lay down, uh, lay face up position and be careful of face up position on, otherwise. And if you keep this face down in, uh, immediately after surgery and uh, most of the patient, this technique works really, it's really very good technique. And the other one, a single layer inversion is also very important uh, for such a large macular hole because when we invert as a classical multilayer inverted technique, when we insert the ILM into the eye, into the macular hole area, and this insert of ILM uh, prevent the uh, good recovery of the glial tissue, glial proliferation on the macular area, and sometimes we can observe a plaque-like uh, uh, material and also the, it may uh, uh, affect the good visual function. Well, I, I, it, you know, it's interesting, your, your technique for repositioning the flap with positioning is exactly the technique that we use, We I'm sure we all use, the barrel roll for giant retinal tears. Uh, I was taught flap to the ground. You, you know, begin and then you turn and you turn and you turn and you wind up using the rotation with the gas inside the eye uh, to reposition the flap. Uh, so, and what about uh, other techniques like uh, stretching the macula with hydrodissection or helon or uh, using uh, free autograft, uh, you know, amniotic membrane? Your comment on these, uh, if, if such a procedure were to fail. So, uh, actually, uh, I do not have experience with uh, stretching uh, technique uh, so much, but I have experience with retinal transplant. But uh, I think uh, if we have ILM, if we have ILM, even in a failed case, if the uh, ILM peeling area is not so large, we can apply, try to uh, apply pedicle flap. Again, like, uh, uh, so also I have some patient that operate like this with the pedicle flap means I uh, create an inverted flap again from the closest part of the uh, area to the over the macular hole, but I do not remove the flap uh, completely uh, from the original ILM area. And uh, I prefer this, but um, if it's not possible, of course, we can use the other uh, uh, techniques such as uh, uh, RISO is perfectly uh, show uh, amnion membrane or retinal transplant or uh, anterior lens uh, capsule and the other material. But uh, in such case, a patient, I prefer a retinal, uh, autolog retinal uh, transplant uh, if this failed and there is no macular, uh, there is no ILM uh, that I can use. Just one, one, sorry, uh, one, sorry. Yeah, uh, one concern, when you leave such a large flap uh, with a broad attachment to the retina, I've seen in few cases a contraction 
at that point. And so you have um, primary closure, perfect closure, but then they develop a kind of pucker and, and uh, distortion of a macular area. And okay. I, have, I had to remove a couple of them completely. The hole was closed, but I had to remove due to this distortion. Have you noticed this? Do you yeah, have any uh, to prevent uh, it? We evaluate uh, the Mac, uh, ILM configuration, also the evitreotinal interface after surgery in most of the patient with M phase OCT. And what I observe, yes, we can observe some uh, proliferation not on the flap. At the age of the flap, we observe some proliferation, but on the flap, so the, the uh, outer surface of ILM, I think there is something there that prevents proliferation on the flap. But the age of the flap, we can observe some proliferation, but it's not really very uh, severe proliferation, and there is no single case that I needed to remove flap together with membrane because of uh, heavy uh, epiretinal membrane proliferation. There's a little proliferation that, uh, that may cause a wrinkling of the flap, but uh, usually it's not uh, prevent uh, visual function. Maybe visual function. Use, um, the metamorphopsy maybe uh, can increase, but the Indeed. proliferation uh, over the flap, uh, I rarely observe, but on the, on the, at the age of the flap, I rarely observe, but on the flap, uh, I uh, have no single case that the proliferation happened. Well, thank you, Remzi, for sharing such a beautiful surgery with us, and uh, we wish you uh, a pleasant day. So thank you again.